some out of Hebrews 2 today. But, uh, kind of a, I don't know, kind of a continuation maybe, somewhat of what we did last week. And we talked about the mind a little bit last week and, and uh, things that you mind, mind in those that are carnal, mind the things of the flesh, and those that are spiritual are becoming the sons of that become the sons of God, or those that mind the, mind the things of the Spirit. And kind of in conjunction, that 2 Corinthians 4, 4 says, In whom he, the small g, God of this world, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So there you go, you have the devil who is the small g god of this world has blinded the minds. I say, thus they get the light. So, it's a very important that we get the light, that we experience the light, and that we look for the light. That's what you're getting your mind. But um, 2 Corinthians, that was 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, but we're going to. He, uh, Hebrews 2.2, 2. did I tell you that? Hebrews 2.2. Mm -hmm. 2. Um, two, 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 one. So this is why we must pay much closer attention to the message once heard to keep from drifting to one side. Is that what yours is? Mm -hmm. Therefore we ought to give yeah. the more earnest to give heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. And they can slip. Mm -hmm. slip right away from it. It's, again, it's the things that you mind. Um, let's go on. To pay close attention. Again, what, what, where is your focus? Where is your attention? Uh, where is your focus f for life? Life as a whole? Life as today? Life as this minute? What is holding your attention? Because that's what you have to, to examine and look at. It talks about examining, see whether you be in the faith. Well, a good indication of whether you're in the faith or not is what holds your attention? What is What holds your focus? What is the focus of your life? That's a good indicator of, of am I on the right track? Am I on, on the, the way, the truth, the life? Am I on the straight and the narrow? Is what holds my attention? You know, where's my focus? What holds my focus? But he says here, uh, so we need to pay much closer to the, the message when it's heard to keep from drifting to one side. It says, for if the message spoken through angels proved to be valid and every violation and fraction of it had its adequate penalty, how can we escape if we pay no attention at all to a salvation that is so great? This is, is so because it was first proclaimed by the Lord himself and it was proved to be, this is, I want to get on down, so I'm going to just read through here. That was proved to us to be valid by the very men who heard it themselves. While God continued to confirm their testimony with signs, marvels, and various sorts of wonder works, and with the gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed in accordance with His will. For it, is, it was not to angels that He gave authority over that world to be of which we are speaking. For someone somewhere has solemnly said, and this is from Psalm um, Psalm chapter 8, I believe, he's quoting here. <clears throat> for what is man that you should think of him, or the son of man that you should care for him? You made him in, it says, this translation says inferior, but the, your translation says a little lower than the angels for a little while. Yet you crowned him with glory and honor, yet set him over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. Set him, made him a little lower than the angels. Now some say this is Christ, and at one point it does speak of Christ, but also of man. You think of our existence today. In this world, we've talked about, you know, 2 Corinthians 4, 4 says that Satan is the small g god of this world. And we're talking about whatever, however we think and how are we established, the, 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 the mind is the battlefield here. The mind is the channel through which the will of God is performed or introduced to be performed, or we could say the will of the world, the will of the small g God of this world is introduced or put in via the mind. 
in order for his will to be performed. So again, it's a matter of choice and choosing and what we focus on. But here he's talking about being made a little lower than the angels. Think about that. The angels were created, but they're there. They see God. They see the throne. They see it from a different perspective. We, on the other hand, it says, Blessed are those who have believed and yet have not seen. Where am I going? Well, I'll get there. Just hang on. <laughs> and we were talking about last week, what's your mind? What you set your focus on, your attention on. So we too must be being made a little lower than the angels. You go back and you look at the beginning that God created the heavens and the earth, and then he created man, and then he created all the beasts of the field, and... I don't believe like the charismatics is that 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 the right words here that that God can't do anything unless you know they go to such an extreme on this. Well, God needs someone praying in order for Him to so it's such ridiculous. God is God of heaven and earth and over Lord over all His creation. It's not that way. But there, there is an element of truth here as far as authority, as far as the way God has set up this universe to work, set up this planet, set up the world, how it works. And there is somewhat of an order to things. God is not chaotic in anything he does or says or what he has established. Nevertheless, he has established a pattern of authority set up in this earth, the higher, so on and so forth. And but it's not. I want to just preface this. What I'm saying is not what they say. Is not that God needs someone here in order to to be able to do anything. No, that is not true. That would be pretty flimsy uh, setup or limiting. a very limiting thing. And that's not what it is. So. I think we, it, at some point someone has to say that that's not what it is. Because there are a lot of people out there that think that, you know, God can't, he's got to have the intercessors and this and that and these people here doing this and that and all this in order for him, his will to be accomplished. I'm sorry. It said before we ever knew him, he, <laughs> he predestinated. Before we ever knew him, he set in motion these things. <coughs> I created the heavens and the earth. He didn't need someone down here. There was no one down here. And so, you know, we did, I just want to preference this today, uh, saying that that's not what I'm saying. That, But nevertheless, God has established authorities and powers and actions that take place and authorities. And there's nothing chaotic about the kingdom of God and the will of God. It's just not left up to chance or, you know, chaos. There is a plan. There is a purpose. There is a thing that God, like the will of God and, and his purpose in the earth and his purpose for creating man and his purpose for everything that happens. And yet we get to choose, don't we? <laughs> That's the marvelous thing about it, God. Or he, and, but it says here we're made a little lower than the angels. Think about that a little bit. They see God. It says, blessed is he that who is who believes and yet has not seen. In the sense of, have you seen God with your physical eyes? Have you seen Jesus with your physical eyes? You, I mean, how many years ago did he walk the, the face of the earth? Now, granted, there are some, Paul, <laughs> that have the, uh, on the road to Dism Damascus that sees the light, that sees, you know, there are always those exceptions out there. But for the the general populace, <laughs> it's blessed are those who who believe and yet have not seen. Why am I saying that? Well, because I will get to it. <laughs> We're made a little lower than the angels. And yet, what great responsibility and opportunity we have believing and yet not having seen. In other words, not having originated in the spiritual realm, in the in the heavenlies, and yet we're born onto this earth, and you know we are that we you know we believe, but yet we have not seen. In the sense, we experience His love, we feel His love, we feel His presence in in His His change and His stirring in our lives, and yet, have you seen <laughs> this eye? So in that 